Coming up on First at Four, the visitation is underway for a Big Stone Gap, Virginia police officer that was killed in the line of duty. And one year after Thanksgiving was flipped upside down by COVID, local health experts say we're in store for a different atmosphere this year. And after 70s during the day today, we've got some chillier weather on the way for the end of the work week. I'll have the very latest coming up right now on First at Four, which begins right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, a visitation is underway for fallen officer Michael Chandler of the Big Stone Gap, Virginia Police Department. Chandler was killed in the line of duty Saturday. WYMT Zach Hawk is there live with more on today's schedule. And Zach, what can folks expect if they want to pay their respects this evening? Steve, they can come out to the David J. Pryor Convocation Center in Wise, Virginia to pay their respects until 7 p.m. when the service will begin. In just the first hour of visitation, we have seen dozens of law enforcement from all across the region and hundreds of people come to show support for Officer Chandler's family and community. Lieutenant Governor-elect Winsome Sears and Attorney General-elect Jason Miaris will join other officials in offering their condolences this evening. Again, Steve, visitation ends at 7 p.m., but the public are still welcome to come out for the service, which is expected to last until around 9. Live in Wise, Virginia, Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. Back to you. Zach, thank you very much. We'll have another a live report from Zach tonight at 6, and of course he'll be covering the funeral tonight as well, and we'll have uh, more on that at 11 tonight. Well, one year after an unusual Thanksgiving due to COVID, local health experts say we're in store for a different atmosphere this year. WYMT's Corey Sanning explains. A holiday known for family gatherings, local health officials say Thanksgiving may look a bit more normal this year. We have less, you know, restrictive guidelines, and actually this year is a little bit more relaxed. Thanksgiving is a very important holiday and it's a very important tradition and you know multiple generations will be together. But despite case numbers being down from where we were a few months ago, Dr. Ferris Cotter encourages the public to remain cautious if they have not been fully vaccinated since the virus can still strike at any time. But we're still seeing patients in the hospital and we are still seeing patients in the ICU and still seeing new cases on the floor. So COVID-19 is still here and we're still seeing patients in the, in the outpatient and the inpatient setting. So it hasn't gone anywhere even though the numbers are lower. Staying safe and hoping to get people back to holiday traditions. In Hazard, Corey Sanning, WYMT Mountain News. And Dr. Cotter also encourages everyone that is eligible to get a booster shot if they can before next week. And now those boosters are available to more people after Governor Andy Bashir signed an executive order today expanding access, saying the extra protection could be critical as COVID-19 numbers have begun to plateau or even slightly increase throughout the state. Folks, you really need to get vaccinated. And now... It should be fairly easy. It's going to make you safer during the next several months. The order says any Kentuckian 18 or older can get a booster. The only eligibility requirement now is that you must be at least six months past your last Pfizer or Moderna vaccine or two months past your Johnson & Johnson shot. Governor Bashir also proclaimed November Lung Cancer Awareness Month today. Joining supporters of lung cancer awareness at the Capitol, he encourages Kentuckians to learn more about lung cancer, its risk factors, and screening options. He pointed out the special significance of lung cancer in our region since Kentucky has the highest rate of lung cancer in the country with more than 89 of every 100,000 people being diagnosed and a death rate that is 50% higher than the national average. We have more information on lung cancer screening, symptoms, and treatment on our website at WYMT.com. An absolutely beautiful day today outside of the breezy conditions, but we've been mild and it's been nice outside with plenty of sunshine. Taking you out to our time-lapse camera from I-64 at Moorhead. You see, we actually 
starting to clear out after a bit of a partly cloudy start to the day. Nothing but blue sky out there right now. Down into downtown Whitesburg, a beautiful blue sky seen there. Upper 60s for temperatures right now. A very, very mild afternoon. A lot of us getting into those low 70s. It's 72 Irvin, 72 in Jackson, 70 Somerset, London, Middlesboro, and Jacksboro at this hour, and 71 in Pikeville. And so, yeah, we're going to continue with the warm weather. Moving over the next little bit, clouds trying to work into some parts of the mountains, but our cold frontal boundary continues to stay out to the west. So it's going to be a breezy night tonight as partly cloudy skies turn mostly cloudy ahead of our big front moving in tomorrow. Temperatures only in the upper 50s for overnight lows tonight. It should be right around where we are for daytime highs this time of year, but we've got highs much cooler than that in the next seven days, and I'll have the details on that coming up in just a few short minutes. Steve? Evan, thank you. Jurors are in their second day of deliberations in the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. He's accused of killing two men and wounding a third at a protest against police in Wisconsin last year. CBS's Michael George is in Kenosha with the latest. Tension outside the courthouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin, as 12 jurors spent a second day deliberating on the fate of 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse. Protesters are anxiously awaiting the verdict. Well, we want that victory to come to our community of Kenosha as an activism, as an organizer. Well, I hope the young boy is found innocent. There are a few dozen demonstrators here, some supporting Rittenhouse and others who want to see him convicted. And while there's been some yelling so far, things have been peaceful. 500 National Guard members are on standby outside the city. Protesters we spoke with are concerned about the possibility of violence, regardless of the outcome. I am very concerned about that. I think most people are afraid, intimidated by people threatening to burn a town down if a man's not guilty. Rittenhouse is charged with five felonies, including three counts of homicide for his actions on the night of August 25th of last year. The Illinois native came to a protest against police carrying an AR-15 style rifle, he says, to protect property. During a dispute with protesters, he shot and killed Anthony Huber and Joseph Rosenbaum and wounded Gage Grosskreutz. The prosecution argued Rittenhouse instigated the violence. But during the trial, Rittenhouse tearfully claimed he feared for his life. There is no lawyer who could possibly say that long deliberations versus short deliberations favor one side or the other. At some point, they'll reach a consensus. On Tuesday, the judge took the unusual step of allowing Rittenhouse to randomly select the final members of the jury. The judge says it's his own tradition he's done for years. Michael George, CBS News, Kenosha, Wisconsin. The judge also says he'll think long and hard about allowing televised trials in the future. He took exception to the media coverage of some of his decisions. A federal judge has sentenced the man known as the QAnon shaman to 41 months in prison. Pictures of Jacob Chansley went viral after the January 6th Capitol riot. He appeared shirtless, wearing face paint and a horned furry headdress, leading others through the Capitol, shouting into a bullhorn. Federal prosecutors asked for a long sentence so his case could be used as an example, arguing he showed little remorse after the attack. In September, he pleaded guilty to a felony charge of obstructing congressional certification of the 2020 vote. More than 25 years after Pulp Fiction came out, the studio behind the cult classic film is suing director Quentin Tarantino. The suit is over the writer and director's plans to sell non-fungible tokens using seven original scenes from the film. An NFT is a unique piece of virtual art that is verified using a blockchain and cannot be duplicated. The NFTs Tarantino wants to sell include excerpts from his handwritten script and exclusive commentary. The problem is Miramax owns most of the rights to the iconic film and claims the NFTs infringe on its intellectual property. For the first time in its history, Apple says it will allow customers to repair their own products. The new program comes as Apple and other tech companies face increasing pressure from regulators and consumers around the world to ease repair restrictions. It's been dubbed the right to repair movement. Apple announced Wednesday that its new program will sell parts to consumers and post online manuals to help fix a problem. The self-service repair is expected to launch early next year, starting with iPhone 12 and 13 devices. 
Starbucks Red season continues with free limited edition reusable cups. The coffee chain is giving out the limited edition red cups Thursday while supplies last. Customers just have to order a holiday or fall drink like a pumpkin spice latte, peppermint mocha, or go edgy and try a chestnut praline latte. In a nod to Starbucks 50th anniversary, the cup is made with 50% recycled material. This is the fourth annual Red Cup Day giveaway. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Wednesday. The Dow closes down today more than 211 points. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. But straight ahead here on First at Four, new research shows America's opioid epidemic has reached unprecedented levels during the pandemic. And cold weather is on the way back thanks to a strong cold front headed our way tomorrow. I'll have the breakdown on the way.